Rochelle and Luke Lamphere expected to raise four kids. Then, out of the blue, came their fifth, baby Sammy. She was born full term, she was a good size, everything looked great. And then the midwife came back two days later and said her head was smaller than her chest circumference. So we went to the doctor on Monday. He was very gentle with telling us that there was going to be difficulty with her later on. Well, hi, cutie. She's not going to be a typical child. There was an underlying cause for Sammy's small head size and stunted brain growth. At six days old, we got the diagnosis of congenital CMV. CMV stands for cytomegalovirus. It's a member of the herpes family, usually spread through urine and saliva. And it's common. More than half of people over the age of 40 have contracted CMV at one point in their life. CMV is rarely dangerous. However, when a woman who's never been infected with CMV contracts the virus for the first time while pregnant, like Rochelle did, it can be devastating to the baby. No, oh, you're fine. You're, you're, you're a grumpy yeah. Sammy is now seven years old and has epilepsy and cerebral palsy from the extensive brain damage caused by the virus. She's unable to walk or sit up on her own, and she's deaf and nonverbal. From the time she was seven months old, She's received nutrition through a tube inserted into her stomach. So she has two seizure meds. She has two medicines for pain, one of which is also a seizure medicine. And then she has high blood pressure, so she has a blood pressure medication. One more, are you doing okay? When Sammy was born, Luke and Rochelle knew nothing about CMV, even though it's a leading cause of birth defects. And more American children are born with CMV than are born with Down syndrome or are born HIV positive. Neither one of us had ever heard of it. Never heard of it. Um, and I was a doula and a childbirth educator, and so I was in the birth world and had never heard of CMV. Each year in the U.S., about 1 in 200 babies is born with CMV. About 1 in 5 of those will develop severe neurological conditions. And 50% of infected babies will have moderate to severe hearing loss. Yet some babies won't exhibit any symptoms at all. The risks are greater for mothers who are infected during the first trimester. Jaden was almost three, just like you. I just wish that it was a disease that we would have known about. I mean, everybody knows about Down syndrome and stuff like that, but nobody knew about CMV. CMV has left a huge hole in the Briscoe family. Jaden was tired, so he was napping. Jaden was LaDaniel and Karina's first child, but his life was cut short at just three and a half years old by severe complications caused by the virus. When Jaden was born, they realized that something was wrong. The head pediatrician walked into our room, kicked everybody else out the room, closed the door. She had a real somber look on her face and said, your son's never going to walk. He's never going to live a normal life. He'll never be able to throw a football or play catch with you. And I really didn't know where to go from there. Jaden was in and out of the hospital throughout his short life getting treatment for his many conditions. That was our life. We took ownership of it. We loved every minute we had with him. We had a normal routine, just like any other family. LaDaniel and Karina wanted Jaden to lead a full life. They road tripped all over Colorado. Jaden got to meet Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. And even visited Disney World through the Make-A-Wish Foundation just before Jaden's third birthday. He was excited. We've never really, i never seen him laugh before. But shortly after, Jaden's health took a turn for the worse. I mean, his, his whole mood just changed. Yeah, like, from anymore. seeing him happy, or the happiest I've ever seen him, to now he didn't seem happy at all. In the following weeks, it was clear Jaden wasn't going to make it. But instead of mourning, the family celebrated the joy that Jaden had given to his loved ones. Put that side on the wall. <laughs> and now they take solace that their three other kids are healthy. Our world was Jaden. We're just happy we had him. All of the moms who have come into my clinic, I've not met a mom who was aware of what it was. Shannon Hughes is a physician's assistant who founded the CMB clinic at Children's Hospital Colorado, the only clinic of its kind in the U.S. I have had moms tell me that this diagnosis can be very isolating for them because they don't know a lot of other people who have children who have the same um, disease and symptoms. We can scrape these cells off and then... The clinic has treated more than 43 CMV babies since it opened almost three years ago, and it consults with hospitals throughout the Rocky Mountain region. Here, babies born with CMV symptoms can be treated with antiviral drugs if they are diagnosed within three weeks of birth. 
This can mitigate many of the more severe effects of the virus. But CMV tests at birth are not always administered because many symptoms can be mistaken for more benign conditions. If babies are infected with CMV and show symptoms after three weeks, by then, it is too late to treat them with the antivirals. And at this time, we have no data to indicate that treatment is of any benefit to those patients, so they would not be um, somebody that we would treat. For parents and their infected babies, it's a game of chance. Even though it may not seem like large numbers to people um, compared to other diseases, if that's your child, um, that is a really, to me, that's all that matters. That's 100% um, being affected if it's your one child. In 2010, a national health style survey licensed by the Centers for Disease Control found that among nearly 4,200 respondents, only 13% of women and 7% of men had heard about congenital CMV. We view it as a significant problem, but since we don't really have a good, a good uh, strategy to deal with it, it uh, prevention has not thus far been part of routine care. Dr. Kent Hayborn is an OBGYN and the chief of obstetrics at Denver Health Hospital. He sees the most severe cases of CMV in ultrasounds of unborn children. It's not a simple yes-no blood test. It's a test that's uh, uh, characterized by a lot of what we would call false positives. He says in the future, universal screening may become a viable option for identifying CMV cases early in pregnancy. But right now, the tests are not always accurate. The only way to confirm the diagnosis uh, uh, in the unborn baby with certainty is to do an amniocentesis, which is an invasive test uh, you know, with a needle into the uterus that carries some risk. So we don't want to be putting uh, pregnancies at risk needlessly. And the only advice to expectant mothers to ward off CMV? Good hand washing is, is to be encouraged. Beyond that, we don't have any really good evidence-based strategies to, to, address the, to address transmission or prevention. I know, sweetheart, I'm sorry. Today, Sammy is attending a pre-operative appointment, prepping for surgery she needs to alleviate hip pain caused by cerebral palsy. Hospital visits are hard on Sammy. The change in routine causes her to have anxiety. And in her fragile state, surgeries, even minor ones, can be dangerous. Is that better, sweetie? You know, every time she goes under anesthesia, there's a risk of her not waking up. Which is why Luke and Rochelle have made a difficult decision. This will be the last surgery Sammy undergoes. We decided quality over quantity. You know, we'd rather her be happy and as healthy as possible instead of doing everything that there is to do out there, so. I agree. Everybody wants a healthy child, but you may not get one, and it's going to be okay. Say love you. Love you. And you'll experience love like you've never experienced before.